All right, let's talk COVID and vaccines with Brian Harrison, former chief of staff at the Department of Health and Human Services, a man who was integral in Operation Warp Speed. Sir, good to talk to you. Yeah, really good to be with you again. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right, so, so Biden built these costly government-run mass vaccination sites. There was 21 of them. They put them in a lot of big cities. And apparently they're just not that popular, according to this article. Biden said the pharmacies were never going to be enough, that we needed this. They had to figure out a way to justify themselves and spend a lot of money. Um, what do you make of this story? Yeah, it's, it's really unbelievable. You know, I recall just the first day or two after Biden entered the White House, they weren't content just to sort of snipe at the plan that we left them uh, in the Trump administration, in Operation right. Warp Speed. They went to the extreme case and told just demonstrably false lies that we left them no plan, that they had to start from scratch. And then they really took a lot of victory laps when they announced this new initiative, these federally run yeah. uh, mass vaccination sites, which was fascinating because that was the only sort of materially relevant improvement they claimed that they made off of uh, President Trump's Operation Warp Speed plan. Uh -huh. And I even warned about it in an op-ed that I wrote, uh, I think just within the first week of them taking office, saying that we didn't leave them a mess. We left them an incredible success, but hubris to think that the federal government alone, that this whole thing could be managed completely out of the West Wing, could actually <laughs> create a mess. So yeah, seeing that Politico story this morning, I, you know, I'm not happy about it. I want things to be successful. I want to defeat COVID. I want to save lives. But that was the only thing they could point to, to say, hey, we did this better than Trump. Yep. And at the end of the day, they really didn't. The plan that's being executed today was the Donald Trump, Trump administration Operation Warp Speed plan. And they put out this big news about, you know, 90% um, of folks be able to be vaccinated by April. You know who else made that exact same news that it would be vaccines would be widely available in the month of April? Go back and Google this. If you're sitting at home, go to Google, look this up. Donald Trump made that announcement last September, September of 20. Donald Trump announced that vaccines would be available, widely available, around April, and he's being proved exactly right. This is not due to the work that Biden has done in the last 10 weeks. This was due to the success of Donald Trump and our administration and Operation Warp Speed. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, I mean, the, the timing for, for Biden just coast into the White House, you know, right when everything's turning and you got the vaccine out. And so, I mean, what great timing. Trump sets the whole thing up in the last year of office yep. and Biden just waltzes into this great situation and they don't have to do anything. He can just watch TV for the first couple of months. Uh, it is pretty funny. Uh, are they, do you think the CDC, you saw the Walensky uh, soundbite, we just played it earlier. I mean, she's almost in tears talking about this bump after the hell we've been through for the last year. Are they over-dramatizing, overreacting to this latest? I mean, it is, it is bumping up. The cases are bumping up, but it seems pretty dramatic. What do you think? Yeah, it was overly dramatic. I don't think it was a good look for a public official. And quite frankly, this was the same CDC director that just a month or so ago said she was extremely worried that life might start getting back to normal, you know, around spring and summer. Yeah. I don't think that's the kind of thing Americans want to be worried about. Quite frankly, I think that's an objective. That's what we should be throwing all of our resources at. We should be celebrating the success of Operation Warp Speed, where vaccinations and vaccines will be nearly ubiquitous just a mere number of weeks from now. And if everybody who gets one or wants one can get it, we should celebrate that. We should throw all of our uh, efforts at getting life back to normal in this country. That is, of course, unless Joe Biden's open border policies, uh, which threaten to destroy that, continue to be implemented. Because these are the same people that are saying, OK, well, it can't be, you know, stay six feet apart, then stay three feet apart, keep the schools locked down, introduce new lockdown measures. But they apparently have no problem opening the borders wide open and importing thousands upon thousands of COVID cases into the United States right here into my backyard in Texas. We know they're creating super spreader events at these shelters. And somehow um, you have to keep your schools closed and the economy locked down, but they have no problem putting 4,000 illegal immigrants packed yeah. in like sardines on the border. There so that's is. one way they really could uh, screw this up as we're nearing you know, the precipice of defeating COVID in the United States. Well, we all know that virtue signaling is more powerful than COVID. <laughs> You know, a, we just know that. It's just a fact, I guess. Um, we also know the Biden administration is pushing for this vaccine passport. Um, and, and to be fair to them, because I want to be fair, they're not saying it's going to be a federally mandated thing. They're not saying you're going to have to have the vaccine for the government to let you do something. But they're pushing it for businesses and stuff like that. Here's Saki. Uh, there are a couple key principles that we are working from. One is that there will be no centralized universal federal vaccinations database and no federal mandate requiring everyone to obtain a single vaccination credential. So, again, they're not going to do it like that. But if a lot of businesses and, and, and local state governments get in on this, it's probably going to feel like you need to have a vaccine if you want to do anything in this country. What do you think? Well, you know, she did say that. That's true. 
But how many truthful things do you hear coming from the White House podium these days? I think yeah. is, a, is a good question to ask. Also, how many times does government get power and it decrease over time? I, I think it's really opening a really problematic uh, issue for us. And also, I just don't think it's necessary at all. I mean, the White House, on one hand, is saying we got to have these sort of vaccine passport measures. But on the other hand, they're celebrating, you know, that 90 percent of folks can get vaccinated if they want to. I, right. I think that's great. We don't need it. We've got near ubiquitous vaccine vaccinations, or at least we're getting very close to that. We have a health care uh, uh, system with capacity right now to handle um, COVID cases. We have treatments that are incredibly efficacious. Um, and we had actually really encouraging news today out of the CDC showing that people once vaccinated with Pfizer and Moderna, I think it reduced transmission by 80 percent. So there's absolutely no need for this. And then also, I think a lot of folks would be rightfully worried about, about a very unholy marriage here between big government right. and big yep. tech. I think this is the type of initiative we should uh, we should oppose. Yeah, it sounds a little scary to me. Anything to throw into big tech, I get a little worried these days. Um, I want to right. end on this. You're running for Congress. Texas 6 is the district. Yep. Uh, we actually spoke to your opponent, one of your opponents, Dan Rodine last week who was a wild man uh how is it going how's it and tell us a little bit about the race oh it's going incredibly well when people yeah. learn there's somebody in this race who's got deep roots in this district has small business experience here plus a track record of going to washington and not just fighting but actually defeating uh the bureaucracy defeating the establishments in both parties taking on the liberal media and delivering real tangible results that people here in Texas care about, like defunding Planned Parenthood, using uh, our public health authorities under the Title 42 order when I was Trump's chief of staff at HHS yeah. to genuinely secure that border. People get incredibly excited, and uh, I'm very, uh, very that's proud great. to say the campaign is going well. We're going we're gonna to win this race. Uh, that's great. Love to hear that. You're certainly qualified for it. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for the time. Great to talk to you. You bet. Good to be with you. All right.